Grand Rising, I'm Ron Usha and welcome to show number 20 on Conversations on Art, a show where friends get together to talk about their art, their creativity, and hopefully we can learn from each other and maybe even inspire each other. Today on the show, I have Eve, Grand Rising Eve. Grand Rising. And how are you today, Eve? Yes, I'm, I'm good, I'm good. Feeling the creative energy, feeling the feeling the energy today. So yeah, okay. Um, so Eve sent me a short bio, which I'll read out and then we'll get into questions. So I'm Eve Dobell, an artist from London. I have recently graduated from university with a degree in philosophy, which has reopened a space to refocus my energy into art and dance. The main focus of my artwork is a pulpitra and, and the human form, predominantly through the medium of acrylic and oil paint. Contemporary dance is also a key part of my life, which goes hand in hand with my artwork. Fascination with the human form and the ability to express a story through an unspoken medium. Thank you, Eve, for sending me that. No worries. So Eve, I know that you grew up in a creative household. Can you tell us how that impacted on you and what you learned from that? I think growing up in a creative household, so my mum is a, a mosaic artist. So it was always very freeing um, and inspiring watching her doing her work, but also in the house in general, we've always had the art everywhere um and it's I'm not sure I think it's also it must be a genetic thing because it it's so natural to me and it was something that I remember I've always been told by family members that I the only way you could get me to stop moving or talking was art I would purely spend all of my energy into creating something and I've always been like that and I think that it's due to the household that I was raised in, which is a great, a great upbringing to see all this creativity around me. Were you taken to shows and exhibitions? Yeah, so I've always been taken to different, loads of different shows and exhibitions, whether that's at the National Gallery or at the RA, loads of different, and seeing so many different styles and pieces, whether that's portraiture or sculptural pieces in different scenarios, it's, it creates that passion that you wouldn't necessarily have if I wasn't given those opportunities and I wasn't raised in the certain way that I was. Um, but I've always, I've always felt the energy towards art that little other things give me, so yeah. Were you encouraged um, with your art in school? School's one thing that I think I was very lucky with, but I think a lot of artists throughout education feel the same way in terms of art is often seen and I've had a lot of conversations with people that believe that art is not a real subject which is complete rubbish however I think it's also very contained art within education it's contained in terms of you're told what to do you're told how to do it you're told what they want to see from you in the exact form. So you're, you're not given complete freedom to express in the way that you do. And I feel a lot of people that I know who went on to university to study fine art really struggled with doing the art that they wanted to do in term, instead of art that would get them the best grades which I think is such a shame because it's such a beautiful way of expressing yourself, which isn't necessarily allowed within the, like now today's education system. But I was very lucky within both of my schools 
that art was I had great teachers and they were it was an inspiring time during those those years of my life so I've been been lucky because I always thought that art is um, a way of ex expressing yourself, you know, who you are, what comes out of you. And so often I see people say, this is good or this is bad or right way or wrong way, and trying to maybe follow other people's art rather than letting the art flow through themselves. Yeah, 100%. It's, I think there's also a lot of pressure on artists when you're not only establishing your own style, but artists in general to hit that mark of perfection, that everything has to be perfect and it has to be a type of way. And I felt, I felt that, and a lot of my peers throughout school felt that that was the only way that you were gonna succeed in art is to have that perfect, like perfect model of what someone else was projecting on you. Um, and so a lot of people found it hard to really express themselves through the medium, which is so it, the main part of art for me is the expression. So I find it hard when you're told that this mold is the most important part of the practice when it's really not. But yeah, so that's how I've always, always felt about the molds of art. Yeah, and it seems that, you know, so many people, I guess they get pressured into, okay, they're doing art, why are you doing it? Rather than art is just, you do it for the sake of doing it. And um, then, they, then we can get caught up in the good and bad, I want to sell this, rather than just, okay, I want to explore this art, I want to draw, I want to paint, I want to sing, I want to dance. Not for the end result of selling it, but just because I love to do it. Yeah, definitely. I think also that it's that need to get the validation from someone and it's the need to for people to tell you that your art is worthy of their appreciation. But it's also, I think, a specific type of environment that we've all grown in that actually art has become something where you have to explain what it is. And every the amount of times I've been asked, so what does it mean? It's like, no, it's just a portrait or it's just the way I felt like expressing myself today. That's all it, that, that's all it is. Um, and a lot of people don't get that. They're like, so what's the story behind it? What's the meaning? But no, sometimes there's no meaning. You just do because you, that's the energy you feel and yeah. Yeah. It that makes me laugh because sometimes you know you go to the art gallery and you yeah. see the painting and on the writing at the bottom it's got all these long words the artist was, was trying to do refracture the art of trying yeah. to find horizontal lines within the methodology of a abstract artist and yeah. <laughs> it's so true and the amount of times when i've done i've because I did art at A level and the amount of times that they would get you to write paragraphs and paragraphs on your art about what what it means what the deeper levels it's like sometimes it just doesn't and that's okay um and so sometimes I would write that but I agree going to art galleries and you see and you know what they're doing and you know that they they're doing it because they feel like they have to but sometimes it's all it needs is a is the art, it's not even the name. Sometimes it just, the art speaks for itself. And also I found sometimes you may be doing something and that flows out of you at that time. And at that time, as you said, we don't know what it means, but maybe in five or 10 years time, you can say, ah, oh, at that time I was feeling this way, which is why it came out like this. And you can't, exp you can't explain it. And even that may be a something that you've put onto the time. So we just don't know. Yeah, and I think as well, I was speaking to a friend about this the other day, that actually, so for me, I feel like my energy into things that I'm passionate about change from day to day. So one day I can be so interested in one piece of art, and then the next day I don't feel that same energy and I keep it moving, and then I come back to it when I feel like it. So I think that it is that flow and it's it's the 
the feeling towards art, which is so special that you were saying. Can you tell us more about that feeling and art? So I think, especially for me, I think that because art is such a personal experience, and I think for a lot of people it is, that when when I'm creating a piece or whether I'm, whether that's a portrait or whether that's a more creatively free piece, I, I have to feel that connection with what I'm doing. Um, so sometimes it's, sometimes that, that energy is just not there. And you're, I feel like I perform the best when I'm fully immersed into what I'm doing and I, the love that I have for for art and creation is there, um, and so, and sometimes it's not. And I think artist block is a a very prominent thing for me, for all artists. That sometimes you you really want it to happen, and you really want a piece to be done and finished right on the spot. But sometimes it it doesn't happen, and that's okay. It's the acceptance that actually sometimes you've just got to let it be and you've got to keep moving with the flow of how you feel towards the piece. But I think, yeah, it's such a personal, personal practice that I, it's sort of when I feel that connection and I feel like I excel in those situations. I'd like to ask you something. Um, I mean, sometimes I do some writing and sometimes I'm sitting at the table and I'm in that, place where I don't know what to write nothing's coming out and I think a, a way around that maybe is to write I don't know what's coming through or write I'm frustrated is that possible to do with art as well and painting where you can just paint I don't know paint um I'm blocked paint I'm not sure yeah there's a lot of times where I it, that frustration of wanting to, like you said, that sometimes I just have to get some paint and just like scribble it around or just get something or look at something that's in my surroundings and just draw. And then if if it doesn't work, sometimes it makes it makes me feel that more frustrated because I'm such a perfectionist. But it's I think that it's important, like you said, just to when you feel like that, just to say, I don't, I don't know what I'm doing. I just got, I've just got to do. And I think some, that sometimes that helps just to, to get you out of that frame of mind. Have you found that sometimes with the scribbles, as you said, or some drawings or paintings where at the time it didn't work, but a few days later, you see something in it that you think, oh, wow, that's where I could take it. Yeah. Uh, definitely I think also with colours as well I see sometimes when you have a, a piece that's not a portrait which you're you're using a reference for you sometimes it takes words and it takes colours and it takes shapes and then you come back to it and I've always been told and I always tell other people that sometimes when you're in that position you do you do your scribbles you do your colours you block out certain things you come and then the fresh eye once you come back to it as you've just said that that it brings a clarity that is so like it's you can't compare it to another idea because you you see the work in front of you in a different light and so it boosts your creativity in term with that break which i think sometimes that break for me is months and sometimes it's days hours but it's it's good to just step back and say do you know what today it's not it's not happening but we this will be something that goes in line with what you said about acceptance yeah i think sometimes you do just have to accept that things aren't always going to be perfect and things aren't always going to go the way that you you plan and I think once 
once you come to terms further with that idea of that perfection is not always going to be the case I think you become more creatively free and you, you're able to produce things that you're proud of and can show for what is actually going on inside your head. It's interesting what you said there. Um, it may not go the way I planned. So what happens then? So I always will plan, try to plan my art because it makes me feel, com it comforts me. Um, but if it doesn't go to plan, so it depends. It depends on the day. As we said before, sometimes it is frustrating and you think, well, why, why is this not going the way that I'm picturing it in my brain? But the often, actually those diversions in the path of your creative journey are actually they turn out for the better. And I realized that trying to force something that I think is gonna be good because I've planned it actually doesn't, it doesn't work like that. And sometimes the piece that you create after is 10 times more representative of what is going on in your brain than actually what, you thought was going to be the case. I remember when your mum told me you were doing a degree in philosophy and at the time that didn't really surprise me. I thought, of course. So how did the philosophy um, connect with your art? I think philosophy and art are very, very connected anyway, that it's about the perspective and about looking at the world and the mind and yourself in a different way that we're not always taught and we don't always think about and I think that deeper level of understanding about the world is what connects me to both it connects me to philosophy and it connects me to my art um and yeah I've always I've always felt that questions further questions need to be asked about the world and I think that art does that just as well as philosophy does just in a different way whether that's words and writing or colour and like creation in in terms of whether that's people in art which I feel very connected to when I my main art is portraiture and I think that a lot of my portraiture is looking at people in a different way you you connect with the ideas of how your piece is going to come out in a way that you do in philosophy when you're looking at an idea you're unpacking something and creating an idea or a, or a piece of art I think that's the way it, the way it connects. So when you're painting and you're thinking about the world and other people do you also get insights about yourself and who you are? Yeah it's a very spiritual practice is art and philosophy the the idea that you you are able I'm able to dive deeper into myself and I'm and art has always been a very spiritual practice for me that actually it's it's a connection that I have and this is something that I've produced but it's also this the frame of mind what when you're creating a piece or when you're painting a portrait you're in a zone that I I don't feel that connection with myself in a lot of other things, but creating and being able to express myself through another medium is really important. And that really connects me with my self because I'm able to see as well and have that time. You wrote um, in the bio that, um a space is reopened to focus the energy into art and dance. What exactly did you mean by that? So I, throughout university, I think it's, it's hard when you are not doing, I'm, I, I didn't do a creative degree in terms of a vocational degree. I did philosophy as, as we've said, but I think when you're not doing art as your degree and I'm not spending 
most of my time doing art because I couldn't you you go to university and your time shifts whereas in school it was easier for me to spend time on art outside of outside of my learning but I think at university it was really quite difficult to find that time to connect properly because there was always a reading there was always a piece of work there was always a dissertation there was something to do with my degree at all times so it was hard to really connect and separate those times so now that I've graduated I've felt this freedom to create again and it was something that throughout my degree I was really yearning for that I was that time to spend on art to spend dancing to do these things that I couldn't do and I felt that that connection was com almost completely severed but and it was it was hard for me it was hard not to have that time so now having graduated it feels so freeing to be able to do that again and spend my time creatively do you think there may be some advantages that you didn't do an art degree so maybe you weren't shaped to follow a certain route but you it allowed you to as you said develop maybe your own style and your own way of thinking yeah i always stick by the fact that i didn't do an art degree i questioned it before going i i for a long time i thought that fine art would be the route that i should take but actually i realized that so that was always something that was going to be a part of my life and it like you said i didn't feel like i wanted to be shaped by any further by the curriculum of like you the university degree and i think that it was a a good choice because i've always and art has remained as something that has been a piece for me so i think if i had done it at university it would have become something that i don't necessarily would think would have been beneficial to me um so yeah i think i've loved my degree and sometimes i think that i oh i should have done a, an art degree because i would have loved it but i think that it is also a good thing that i didn't to establish my own style as well and you talked about, you know, when you was in school and maybe they see art as a kind of a side bit. How would you change things? Because art, I think, is life. So it is mathematics, it is science, it is English, it is geography, it is history. So how, if you had just a blank sheet, how would you do things to encourage more uh, students to engage, you know, just for fun, enjoy and expression their art? That's an interesting question. I, I think that it would take a while because we've set, we've been formed in a way throughout our educational life that actually the best way to go is science and maths and then the humanities are on the side and then art is just a glorified hobby we that is no, no place no place in the education system but i i think i would start by making it a more integral part of the curriculum i think that that's important and more students that would be able to create and freely express themselves through that medium that isn't a way that it I think it needs to change at its foundations in terms of taking separating art from grades and I think a lot of things need to change in that way and I think even just using art to help in the other subjects so that you're able, because for me, I think that I use I art in 
ways to to learn and memorize things so I'm a very visual learner and I think a lot of people are that people learn in different ways which isn't necessarily appreciated within schools you are supposed to memorize things and learn in a very similar way but that doesn't work for everyone so I think integrating different ways of learning and understanding that people learn and grow in different ways so using art within the other subjects and making sure that it's it's taught in a different way I think it's is necessary. I remember reading this article about Jimi Hendrix and when he was writing a piece of music he would say this bit sounds red this bit sounds a bit blue, this bit is a bit green. And he will say to his musicians, can you play red and play green? And you talked about colour. How important is colour? I think colour is important. In, and people don't realise how important colour is. That the ways that we see the world in different colours and when we see different colours in nature, it sparks a different feeling and you you feel certain ways and I think you also are always taught about this in literature so you're taught that red is a particular feeling and emotion and so the same as white and you feel that darkness and light but you don't necessarily realize this in the world but I think as an artist you 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 have a heightened appreciation for the colors that are around you and I think that even when I'm out, I get a lot of inspiration with my colours and just feel the feelings that you get from seeing certain colours. Are, you, you notice it when you, when you do art, I think. Could you talk about um, your dance? Yes, I grew up dancing. I've always, I've always been quite an active, active soul. I have always had a passion for dance. I, since I was a baby, I've been dancing around my living room and to music and I feel deep connection with music. And I've danced specific, specifically in contemporary dance for many years, um, which is re recently I've re <laughs> regained my love for after university, but um, that was a, a very important part of my life growing up. Um, performing and creating in in a different way and I think that ties in with my art and my love for the human form like I said but it's yeah it's been a very important part of my life and it's something that brings me great joy so like like art does and like philosophy does. Um, well, I don't want to embarrass you, but there was a story about, you know, when you were a student back in school and that you were always really good at being part of a team and connecting with different people, with different ways of being. Uh, has that informed you in your art or do you even think about that? I think connection to people is has always been quite an important part in my life I think I love I love people I love talking to people I love doing art of people I love dancing with people I think it's it's great and I think you learn a lot from other people um and I also think that that's something that everyone needs to maintain and after the two two years that we've just had that you realize how important seeing people are and talking to people um, so I do feel I do feel that my art my dance and ev everyday life is shaped by the interactions that I have with people is it the way that you your expression or movement of the human body and how do you bring that into your art yeah so a lot of as as a dancer as well as an artist it's you gain a feeling about the body and you not about just about your own but when you're watching you're watching 
performances or you're dancing with others and you're working in a, a space, you gain this energy from, from the piece and you also understand a lot about the form of the body and the appreciation for the human form is what I portray in my art. The, the in, not only the individualism and each person's body, the way it moves and the way it shows its own stories and the skin tones to the facial features. I think you gain that through both performative art and creative art. I think it's, you gain the same feelings and from both, which I, which I guess is why I have the connection to both, to both spheres. Okay, Eve, could you show us one piece of art right now? Yes, so this is a portrait that I've done recently um, of a friend, an old friend of mine. And sometimes you, I feel that um, with this piece in particular, it's sometimes I'll see photos of people and you see the lighting and you see the colours and you think, I need to paint this. This is something that I need to put onto a piece of paper. And that's like we were talking about earlier with the colours and seeing colours in the world. I think that that's the same with looking at people. I sometimes walk down the street and I see people and I think you would be great as a piece of art. And I wish that in those moments I could just sit them down and have them sit for me. But yeah, I think that's something that I feel a lot with my portraiture. Have you ever stopped anybody and actually asked them if you could paint them? And I wish, I wish I had. Um, I haven't, but I wish. <laughs> that's my next, my next stage is. Um, but no, I wish, I wish I had the, <laughs> the, the confidence to stop those people in the street. Oh, so it's a confidence about just approaching them and in that moment. Yeah, I feel like people wouldn't under necessarily understand. It's like going up to someone and being like, I know this is a really strange question, but I, I would love to paint you. Um, sometimes I, I think that people might take it in a strange way. I should, I should, that's my, should be my New Year's goal. What are you seeing in their faces? I think you see it, you gauge a lot from faces. You see a story, you see an emotion, you see what they're holding. There's a lot of tension that you can see in some people's faces that you realise that that's something that they're holding on to. Um, you also see, I, I, I think that looking at texture and skin tone and hair is also so fascinating that everyone is a completely different face and you realise that when you are mixing colours and you're mixing, you're creating texture on the face, you realise how different every single individual that you paint is. And I think that that's what's magical about painting portraits that you really gain a connection with that person because you've you've seen them in a different way and you've looked at them through a different lens that looks at their emotion that looks at how they were in the in the frame that you've captured them in yeah maybe it's possible that even when you're when you're painting and looking at them, you're seeing emotions and feelings in them that they may not even be aware of themselves. Yeah, definitely. I think that sometimes you see, and the eyes, I mean, it's a famous phrase that the eyes are the window to the soul, but I think that your eyes, when you're painting someone's eyes, you can really tell the emotions that they feel. And like you said, it's not necessarily a conscious thing but it's something that as an artist who's looking in detail at those faces you can really notice you see how how they are and what what they're what they're thinking in that that time or feeling 
have you done this with yourself in regards to self-portraits and notice things in yourself that maybe you weren't uh, aware of? Sometimes I create and I I paint myself and I, I think, wow, I didn't, I've never seen myself in that light before. I've never, I never thought that that was the case and I've never thought that that's how I was showing myself to in this frame of time I sort of have understood a lot about myself because I started off mainly doing self-portraits and using myself as reference and re more recently I've gone on to painting others but I think whilst painting self-portraits I did learn a lot about myself which was sometimes you think how did I not, how, how would I have never noticed that before? So it's, I, I enjoyed it, but I recently I've preferred, preferred looking, looking into others other than myself. Can you tell us about a connection? So with that painting that you just showed us, obviously I'm assuming that you sat with this person a while what's happening between you and that person, or maybe even, you didn't sit with them for a while, but you're seeing their face for a long time. What's happening at that moment? Yeah, so this painting was actually from photo reference, but the but it's a friend that I've had for years and I've actually reconnected with her recently. And so spending that time with the the portrait and with her has been it's it's something that I always find comforting and I find you you create this connection with the person even though they're not there I think you and that's what helped me a lot during this period of lockdown that I was painting a lot of other people and my friends and family and you you gain that closeness from being separated by painting them because you it is such an intimate experience you're painting every single detail of someone's face and their foundations and their and the tiny details that you see people in different lights sometimes it takes a portrait and looking at someone in that detail to really realize who they are to you and who they are in general and I there's a lot of times that I've painted people and I see them in in a clearer way after I've painted them because you've seen them in every single aspect of their face. You said there that um, you see who they are to you. Do you get an inkling into who you are to them? I've never thought of that actually. I've never thought because I, I think when you're seeing when you're painting someone, your your energy is focused on on them. So I've never actually considered the other way around. Next time I paint a portrait, I'll I'll consider the other way around. See how I see how I feel. I got a friend at the moment, and she's working on skin tones, and we homogenize skin tones into this, this, and this: black, white, brown, whatever. Yeah. But we know that looking at them, most people are completely different. How tricky is it to get that skin tone correct? Yeah, so skin tone is something that I've worked really hard on actually. And I think it's fascinating that when you're creating, well, recently I've, I've actually been using a, a limited palette. So you use fewer colors. So you use your primary colors um, to create, foundations and you, you you build up with your yellow your red and your blue to create certain skin tones and you can create all different skin tones using those colors but the colors that go into each individual skin tone is really difficult and it's something that you have to really work on um that i'm still working on but i think i've come a long way from working with a limited palette because you're looking at whether someone's undertones are re more red, whether they've got a cooler undertone, whether they've got a more yellow undertone, you're looking at the 
foundations of someone's skin tone in terms of mixing these different colors so you realize through that process how different everyone's skin tone is it's never the same the formula is never the same and I think that for painting different people you realize how different that process is and I think that that's a fascinating but incredibly difficult process. I've never thought of that so there's a layer of colour beneath the layer that you're painting? Yeah, so there's the, even in shadow, this is something that I've learned that in shadows, that it's a lot of purpley reds. So you get those, nothing's ever black and white really. Your colours that you use are a mix of the primary colours and your foundation. So you have the level below. And so what when someone, well, so if my mum will come in or a friend will come in and watch my process, you have to lay out those foundational colours before, before you even create a tone that looks like this person's skin tone. Sometimes it will be, you're setting out your greens or you're setting out your reds, you're setting out the colours underneath and then you lay your other colours on top of that and then it creates the skin tone. But I think that when I look at people now, I look at people in terms of, oh, there's a ready skin tone, there's a ready undertone. I'm looking at the undertones, I'm not looking at the colour on top because there's so many colours underneath that you don't realise until you've gone through that process that actually there's, the variation is crazy. Does that then, you know, allow us to, how you say it there, so when we see somebody, we see just the body and who they are, but how you're speaking is that doing the artwork allows you to see the deeper layers between them, and it may be deeper layers of emotion, deeper layers of feeling, deeper layers of colour, and that makes everybody far more complex, unique and interesting. I think that's why I find portraiture so interesting is because as you said it's those layers and you really connect once through this from the start to the end of the piece you see those layers so clearly and then that starts to translate into life you start to see people in in layers and you start to look at people in a way that you see your art of those people you you see in that frame of mind which I think is really interesting when I started to realize that that's what I was doing and the process that you have to take in art is also reflective of how you consider people around you in, in the world. I'm just thinking that how you're speaking here that then it allows us to impossible through art to go anywhere in the world and see just the uniqueness of somebody. They could be from the furthest country, they could be from here, they can be from anywhere. But if we get rid of uh, maybe their country, their language or so on, we can really hone in on who they are and not put them in a kind of group. Yeah, I think a lot of the time as well, we, we see borders on, on things. We see people as their country, we see people as their flag, we see people as their the border between so here to Wales or here to somewhere else it's a different we our borders are different our land is different but I think as people we're all so unique but also we have the same layers in a different way we 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 can all connect to each other through a through a mutual experience of life, but with different layers and cultures and experiences that make looking at anyone, regardless of what the country, like you said, or the language, you're looking at people through a completely mutual language. You're looking at through the medium of art instead of those external factors, which I think brings people together because anyone can regardless of language can watch a piece of dance or can watch a film of art you can like you can watch 
look at a piece of art and re and have that connection where you don't have to speak and I think that that's important to bring people together and I think that art is such an important part of the world that isn't necessarily appreciated as it should be. It seems by what you're saying as well it brings a compassion for human beings, things, people, trees, whatever you're painting. Yeah, you. I think you really see people as just people and you see people as their, as those foundations that I was talking about, you have that compassion for beings. And I think that you, through my own, through my own process of art, and my own spiritual connection with my own art I think that that's something that you gain as an artist that you're looking at people as people and I think that as you said that compassion is really important have you ever become ever, uh, very emotional when you're painting I and think what kind of emotions have you felt while you're painting I feel a range, a range of emotions when I'm painting, but some, I think my, the moments where I feel the most emotional are when I'm painting or I'm creating or I'm dancing because it's, it's a release of energy and it's the emotion that you're putting into that piece that is, it heightens everything. So if something goes wrong, that can, really emotionally impact <laughs> impact me but at the same time it can also bring such a level of joy that is paramount to anything that I've experienced from other things in life and I think that it can also it can also bring complete peace I feel inner peace when I when I paint but sometimes that's not true but sometimes it's a frustration or an anger or a um sadness I think that it it allows for emotions to be to be projected that you might have been holding on to or something goes wrong and it brings out those emotions is it that piece similar to I know you have a practice of meditation or you meditate sometimes is there a similarity or have you felt similar between the meditation and doing the art? Yeah, I think there's, I see a huge similarity between meditation and, and art because you're really focused on yourself and you, you, that inner focus is, is all that's there in that moment. You're, it's just you and the piece or you and yourself. I think that I see those similarities when I'm working or when I meditate. And I think that that connection with myself that we were talking about earlier, I feel that very deeply when I'm creating a piece and whilst I'm meditating or doing a yoga practice or I'm doing anything in the artistic realm, I think that they're very, they're very similar and the connection is there strongly. Because I've always felt that meditation is not something you do, it's who you are. And it's just the letting go of the barriers and the concept and ideas that cover it. So maybe your art is a way of, you know, you drop in these concepts and ideas and being who you really are in that moment, which is what is the feeling of meditation. Yeah, it's that, it is that feeling of dropping barriers and that freedom and that peace and the ability to just be and just create and to just, I feel it is, it's that creation and living without those barriers and those mental barriers. And I think that the times where I'm the most myself and the most at peace and those barriers are completely down and I can feel vulnerable and I can feel those emotions in the rawest form are both in meditation and when I'm in a room doing art and I think that 
the, the two are synonymous. It's like, I love to be in a small space that's shut off and I'd like to be completely alone. It's a very personal practice when I do my art, but the same is said for when I meditate, I think that it's so important to have that time alone and to connect with yourself that I, that however anyone is able to do that and to drop those barriers, whether that's through poetry, whether that's through writing, through reading, through art, dance, all of these, I think that to, to be able to find something like that, that you're able to connect with yourself with is so special. And I really appreciate that I've been able to, A, grow up in a household where it's been actively um, pushed, but it's been allowed and it's been, I've been free to explore those avenues, which a lot of people haven't. And I think that it's such a great feeling when you finally found something or when you finally can connect to something and you can relate that to yourself. I think that's a, such a great feeling. The um, writer, um, Brené Brown, has this saying, and it, it is the power of vulnerability. And you mentioned vulnerability just a moment ago. What does that mean to you? I think, as we were saying, vulnerability is, is the dropping of those barriers. Vulnerability is allowing yourself to just feel and be open to anything that's around you, but also to the emotions that you feel. I think that vulnerability is so important, but it's something that a lot of people shy away from because it's scary, it's scary to let yourself be vulnerable. And I think in art specifically, I think that being vulnerable means taking, making those choices and just doing, even though it's something that you're, you're breaking those barriers of being scared of doing it or being apprehensive as, and pushing those boundaries of that set border and going out of your comfort zone. I think that's what, why vulnerability is so important because that's how you grow you grow from being vulnerable I think that the most vulnerable moments are where you realize and you are able to unlock something else inside of you that is able to further whether that's in art or life I think it's just a it's such an important and valuable experience to to accept the vulnerability I like what you said there, um, to unlock something inside of us. So maybe even find something that we didn't even know was there. Yeah, sometimes you you surprise yourself. Sometimes I, when I listen to music, and I get a lot of inspiration from music of all types, but I'll put on some music uh, and I will just dance and I will just be. And I think especially when I perform, I was performing that vulnerability and that pushing yourself to the limits of people watching and people experiencing the same in being in the same room as you I think you you then learn and you are able to grow from that and I think that I also have seen massive growth when I've been able to and you it's like you, as you said sometimes you don't even think that that's a capability you sometimes you say so you just do and and I realize I didn't even think that, that was possible I didn't even think my body could move like that I didn't think I could do that but suddenly when I've let myself be free and vulnerable and I've let myself just move and do then you can see what you're truly capable of it's like there's a lock which you don't know was there and you have the key that you didn't realise that you had. Yeah. And it's, and it's surprising. It takes you back. <laughs> what, what, how, how, have I, how have I been able to do this? But I, it's, yeah, it's, it's such an amazing feeling as well after letting yourself be vulnerable, but also gaining something back from that. I think mean, that's a, a great, a great feeling. 
So what's next for you, Eve? What's next? Next is letting myself connect with my work. I want to spend more time with my art. Um, I hope to, at the moment, I'm uh, basically trying to find work. But for me, I think it's important that, I, and what I've realized throughout my degree is that how necessary those industries as, as like art and dance are to my life and that I that's something that I need to find within work and I think that for me it's it's much more important right now I, to find something that makes me happy and that makes me feel inspired and so for me now carrying on into a working world and into life ahead of education is trying to intertwine my art with my work. So that's what I hope to do. It's a fruitful thought, but I'm trying to hold on to. Well, Eve, it's been an absolute pleasure to speak with you. You've come a long way. <laughs> Thank you, yes. Yeah. And uh, it'll, I think it'd be great to get back to you in a while to see where you are and see you, where your art has gone. I think that'd be great. Oh, yes, I would absolutely love to. It's been a pleasure. It's been a pleasure. Well, thank you very much. This has been uh, Rana Usha's show number 20 on Conversations on Art with Eve. So thank you very much, Eve. Thank you very much. I will leave a link to Eve Instagram. So if you would like to contact Eve or view more of her artwork, you can see it there. Uh, so thank you very much and goodbye.